Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMadeVince.com and in this video today is another trying to fix video, another video where I try to fix something. Now I'm not a professional in this, I just really like messing around and looking at things, trying to fix things when I've got no expertise in the particular device I'm fixing before, such as this one here. Never seen one before, never played with one before, but it's not working and I want to see what's wrong with it. On now. Yes, good, okay. There was a little bit of life there, so hopefully it's not gonna be a LCD problem because seeing those bubbles there, I thought it might be LCD. I'm just gonna do that again, taking the battery out, and here we go, I'm gonna put it in. In fact, when I took the battery out, it lit up there. On. Right, so nothing's happening, but yet that's good because if it was an LCD problem, I'm taking the battery out again, put it back in. Don't know if anything happened that time. If it was an LCD problem, would it... Uh... Mind you, what's all that black down the bottom? Oh no, that's just the, uh, the picture behind. Uh, would it even flash up for a second? I don't think it would. Right, okay, so this is the speaker here, Konami. Can I see anything that looks bad straight away? No. So this looks like a diode here, we've got a resistor. This looks like a crystal capacitor. Uh, yeah. Right, nothing's jumping out at me. That, that looks bad there, which is annoying. It does look like there's a little chip in here, but it looks like it's got uh, a blob of stuff, of stuff over it. You know those chips that are like covered with that black blob, so you can't actually do anything with them. I hope it's not that. Right, so this is it here. Oh, you know, I've, uh, all my confidence has suddenly gone. I don't think I'm gonna be able to fix this because it doesn't look like there's anything obvious on the components. Interestingly, all that kind of weird grease thing is on this part here. So this is just, oh, is it just on the polar? Oh, it's just on the polarizing film. Right, okay. All right, that should be able to be fixed then. Uh, the button's there, so now, how does this, how does this join to here? Is it one of those little zebra connectors? the components that I can test. So for example, this capacitor showing okay. These are all tiny capacitors and if you have a look it says 10 PC, 20 PC. So from memory I think that was, uh, I think that was, I can't remember now, was it 0.1? Whatever it was, it made sense. I can't remember exactly what it was on my meter, but it made sense that this was double this one here. This one was 0.1 UF, 0.1 microfarad. I'm trying to think, were they 10 nanofarad and 20 nanofarad or 100? I'm not too sure, I can't fully remember. Uh, these two you see me test earlier. The diodes were testing okay in circuit, but I did unsolder them just to check. And what I did is I have got this pack here with diodes in, and I knew I recognized that number because it's the same as the diode here, which is the 1N4148. And I uh, checked it against that one, and my meter's shown exactly the same against them. What I did is I just soldered this back onto the middle here. I don't know whether I've broken it now or not, but I've soldered it onto that plate. I'm not sure whether it's gonna still make the noise or not. Uh, and then I just reflowed absolutely everything on here. I also took off this crystal here, but as far as I know, I've got no way of testing that crystal. I'll have to Google that one to see what's happening with it. And all these links and stuff, although they look a bit messy, they're all testing okay. So unless it's the crystal, the only other thing I could think is that it's the chip itself, which I won't be able to do anything about. This crystal, I can't see any kind of rating on it. It says KDS O or zero F, I'm not too sure. But if you have a look there,
There you go, KDS0F. I googled that and it's not coming up with anything apart from the fact that KDS makes crystals. So I don't really know what to change that with if, I, if, if that was to be 40. So this is obviously, I think, something to do with timing, isn't it? But I don't know. I, I really don't know. I'm going to, because I've reflowed everything now, I've touched every single bit of solder. I am going to put it back together. Well, I'm going to clean it first with IPA, then I'm going to put it back together. I'm going to clean this strip here, and I'm going to clean the strip here. But I don't think they're at fault because the LCD was, uh, was displaying before. Put it back together. I just want to see if it's doing what it was before or whether it's any better or it might even be worse now. I really don't know. Right, okay, starting to get somewhere. So look, I've just put the speaker back in here to make it a bit louder so I can hear it. Now, I've got the screen just back on and I'm putting pressure on with my thumb because remember it's not screwed in. Now, do you remember this crystal here? Watch this. So when I put my finger across here, the crystal, look what happens. And take it off and it goes. I'm thinking maybe the crystal itself has gone faulty. Now, I don't know how to actually, uh, you know, control the game, but every time I touch over here, see, look, if I touch everywhere else, right, as well as that, I'm battling by trying to line the screen up perfectly and put pressure on it, which is hard, but. Can you see? Now I know it's all lighting up, but it's doing something, isn't it? And when I do press everything else, oh, there we go. Right, that is that capacitor that I did measure. Oh, yes, yeah, when I short that, and but that goes on to the crystal, doesn't it? I wonder how I can find out what crystal that is. Well, I'm going to spend a bit more time Googling that information on that crystal, but I did it once already. I couldn't find anything, but I didn't spend very long. But look, it's definitely something to do with that. So I don't believe it's a faulty LCD. I don't even know if it is a faulty chip. I might think it might be all to do with this crystal. The only thing is, though, it doesn't look like I'm actually playing the game, if you know what I mean. For saying that, my finger's not going to provide the same. All that's happening is I'm putting a slight short across it. I think. Yeah, let me look into that crystal more. Okay, so it is the next day and I did actually finish up yesterday. I finished up the video saying that I don't know what's wrong with it, I've done my best, blah, blah, blah. If anybody knows it, I can do a revisit video. And uh, I was going to edit it up and then I thought I want to do more research into this crystal because it's really confusing me why it only says KDS, which I know is a manufacturer, and then OF, there's no frequency written on it. And F apparently stands for the month it was made, so I'm, I'm thinking this is a date code, so O must be maybe the last digit of the year it was made. And uh, it didn't really have anything else. And then I started looking at eBay and, and the uh, KDS crystals on there just had various other date codes and stuff. Looked exactly the same, but with other printouts on it. So I started to think, well, that's weird. And then I looked at RS and I noticed loads of them had this frequency here. And then I got to thinking, maybe like diodes, there isn't a huge amount. So you know, like with resistors and capacitors, there's just like huge amounts of them. But when I got my diode kit, it only has whatever it is, like the five most common diodes in it. So maybe with crystals, although you probably can get ones that resonate at all different frequencies, maybe that's not that common. So then I wrote down the frequency of all the ones that were in RS, and they're all coming up as, not all, but most of them are coming up as 32.8. 768 kilohertz. So then I started googling this and one of the things said why is this crystal used in so many products and basically the answer was it's used in near enough all products because it's dirt cheap. It's as cheap as chips is what it said because you can get them for a few pence because they're so mass produced because they're in clocks, watches and just about everything else as well. So that got me thinking I do have 
uh, leftover bits of quartz watches. Now, I know these are much smaller, but if they're the same frequency, will it work fine? Now, I looked up, apparently they're not polarity conscious, meaning that you can put them on either way around. Now let's zoom out. Let's see if this makes any difference. And basically they're called a quartz crystal resonator. There was another one that's called quartz crystals oscillator. Don't know the difference between an oscillator and a resonator. Are they just different words of the same meaning the same thing or do they do different functions? I don't know. Oh! Right, okay, well it did make a sound before. No, there's nothing there. Oh yes, there is, there is, look, it says all the zeros. Game one. Look. Yes. It's got to hear game one, two, three. Oh my god, so it is, it is the crystal! Hopefully you can see that. Right, hold on. Right, what do I, fire? What do I do? I've got 10 points. No, it died, 30 points. Right, does everything work? Left, right, up, down, yes. And uh, these things are working. So, <laughs> unbelievable. So it is that little crystal that was faulty. I don't know what I did with the old, uh, there we go. That one there has gone faulty. So maybe it had been dropped, and maybe once these are dropped, maybe the crystal inside breaks, or maybe it wears out if it's moving at 32,000 uh, bits a second. Maybe they've only got a certain life before they die. Amazing, look at that. Is it all back together and all working perfectly? You've got to get to 100 points and then basically you can make your way down into this sewer down here. You've got the right hand button to hit the things on the right hand side, left hand button to hit the things on the left hand side. And uh, yeah, that is basically it. And I presume then you need to get the key here to rescue April O'Neil. But it appears to be working just fine. So I really enjoyed this video because it was like a proper fault finding exercise. It wasn't just a case of uh, cleaning the battery contacts, you know, it really, uh, it sort of had me thinking it was this, then it wasn't that, then it was this, and eventually when it fired up it was such a nice feeling. So it's not that I think the game is good, it's just the fact that it's so nice to see it working again when it wasn't working. It's just purely the fact of fixing something that's broken. So hopefully you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.